Now, TML, let me review with you the possible consequences based on the allegations. In this case, this cause may be transferred to the appropriate adult court under Juvenile Rule 30 if probable cause is determined, since the complaint alleges that an individual over 14 years old is delinquent by conduct that would constitute felonies if committed by an adult. If the case is not transferred to an adult court, trial of this cause in juvenile court, if the cause charges are found true, could result in placement in the Department of Youth Services, detention, probation, and other penalties. Do you uh, understand those are the possible results that could happen as a result of these allegations? Yes, sir. No. The court will defer taking a plea on the charges uh, recognizing that a motion for transfer was filed on March 1st, 2012 by David Joyce, the prosecuting attorney for Joggett County, and based on the uh, Rule 30 and Revised Code Section 2152.10, the court uh, will defer taking a plea, but instead, under Juvenile Rule 30, the court shall hold a preliminary hearing to determine if there is probable cause to believe, believe that the juvenile committed the acts alleged and that the act will be an offense if committed by an adult. Just to briefly explain that to TML, the uh, court will hold a hearing on probable cause. There are four elements that the court is required to look at. First of all, the age of the alleged uh, delinquent. Second of all, uh, is that indeed in the cases of these charges that death occurred. Uh, the third thing required is that there's probable cause that the uh, charges and the facts of the charges are, 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 are believable to be true. And last but not least, that there's probable cause to believe that uh, TML3 was the person who caused those events. Uh, at this time, the court has set the probable cause hearing. And if the deputy clerk has that notice. <clears throat> The probable cause hearing is hereby set for April 3rd, 2012 at 1.30 p.m. The court will note that that date is later than the date that had tentatively been set aside for the benefit of new counsel. So this matter will be set for uh, a hearing on probable cause on the issue of whether or not jurisdiction should be transferred to the adult division of the Joggle County uh, Common Pleas Court, and that probable cause hearing is now set for April 3, 2012. The deputy clerk is handing out the mandatory Rule 30 notice. The rule requires, one, that the notice be acknowledged in writing by the juvenile, by the juvenile's legal guardians, by the, the lawyers for the juvenile, and by the state through the prosecutor. That acknowledgement is being obtained and that this hearing has to be at least three days after notice has been given. We are well uh, beyond the three-day rule uh, for purposes of the April 3rd date. have the Rule 30 notice getting signed? Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, we need the state to sign. For the benefit of those attending, in a Rule 30 proceeding, the burden is on the state, being the prosecutor, to establish the probable cause that I previously described, uh, and the defense will have their opportunity to participate uh, by challenging any witnesses the state may present and to present opening statement and closing <coughs> argument, but the defense does not present evidence at a Rule 30 hearing. Uh, the court has one last order of business in this initial hearing, and that is uh, the court finds that as a result 
of the prosecutor, David Joyce's filing of the motion for relinquishment of jurisdiction under Juvenile Rule 30 that said filing constitutes good cause for extending the detention of TML 3, and TML 3 is hereby uh, remanded to the Portis Jogger County Detention Center to remain in detention uh, pending the Juvenile Rule 30 hearing in this matter. Is there any other business uh, to come before the court with respect to the initial hearing? Prosecutor Burling? Nothing on behalf of the state, Your Honor. You. Attorney Farinacci? Nothing, thank you, Your Honor. All right, at that will conclude the initial hearing. And at this time, uh, I will ask the sheriff to please uh, escort TML3 uh, and remand him into the custody of the sheriff for transportation back to the detention facility. We are going to do this in the same order last time. I'm then going to excuse Mr. and Mrs. Nolan.